Hi, my name is Christina Consolo, and I'm uh, putting this up to share my story and uh, to try to get some help with some of the enormous um, costs that I'm being faced with right now, having um, a yet undetermined neurological condition. And it was actually a year ago today that I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I thought I was dead and I actually walked around the house and I wasn't breathing and I couldn't remember how to breathe and then I started sneezing and vomiting and went on to be really sick with what I thought was the flu for the next three weeks and then it started morphing into a, a host of neurological problems some of which I had actually experienced before um, in the preceding years and I were, was told uh, the docs didn't even didn't know what it was or they thought it was fibromyalgia or it was related to another injury that I'd had on my back uh, years previous. So anyway, um, in the past year I've seen probably 25 specialists. Uh, most of them in neurology or, or in, uh, uh, seizure specialists and neurosurgeons. I've been to Mayo. Um, I've seen infectious disease people, I've seen uh, neuro-ophthalmologists and retina specialists and everything because what, what's happening to me now is I have these weird um, glitches in my consciousness where I can't tell if I'm awake or I'm dead or I'm sleeping or, or what's going on. And on top of that I have um, what are called drop attacks. I let the big truck go by, and then I keep talking. I've had a couple of takes of this already, so now I'm just going to be like, eh, whatever. Um, I have drop attacks because the the muscle spasms that I have from this malfunction that's going on in my brain, which is something electrical that they really can't determine, like why it's happening. Um, it'll make me just pass out like in the middle of talking to somebody I'll just drop to the ground and I can hear everything that's going on but I can't communicate uh, I have horrible hallucinations some of them I'll have like all day long like while I'm walking around with my eyes open and the neuro ophthalmologist explained to me it's because the back of my head where my visual cortex is which is the part where you actually see um, it, it has, is malfunctioning from probably this initial event which was something like an embolus type event. It wasn't an embolus but it, it acts like it was is what I've been told in the way that it's affected me. It's also affected my autonomic center so I have like wildly high and low blood pressures uh, they call it malignant or accelerating hypertension and my temperature's off, like I'm always like 95, 96 degrees now. And so the rest of my body can't really function normally and, and until this gets investigated further and treated. And I was in kind of a rough situation. I came down to, to Florida to visit a friend who's, whose wife had just died. And I got sick while I was down here. And I had had just a few days before that a bunch of shots in my neck because I was having so much pain in my neck. And all of a sudden, like, my neck vessels, my neck muscles start giving out, pinching down on the arteries in the back of my head. And it took months and months and months to figure out how, what was happening with this. Like, it was, a, it's a very rare intermittent, what they call vertebral basilary insufficiency. And it usually happens to people that are, like, 90. Um, and I'm 47. So um, there's been a lot of investigation that's been done and, and most of it was only possible because of the generosity of my family members who pulled together and helped get me like Cadillac insurance so I could see some really good doctors compared to the really shitty doctors that I had been seeing years earlier that kept telling me that I had fibromyalgia and it, where everything was just kind of like blown off all the time. There was no investigation that was ever being done. And we were, we were literally like this close to figuring out how to deal with this situation. And I went to the doctor last week um, 
to, to get the results of a spinal tap that I had done where they're able to rule out that there wasn't any like viruses or bacteria or anything in my system that's making this happen, that it is mechanical and electrical as opposed to, uh, you know, being something that I was exposed to or got sick from. And, um, and when we were at that appointment, we found out my insurance had actually run out and, um, I have, uh, I have no way of continuing my insurance. It's absolutely no way my entire family is tapped out from what has transpired over the past year and trying to help me. I'm actually from Michigan and I've lived there my whole life and I had come down to visit a friend in Florida and I've had to become a resident of this state because I can't even leave and drive in a car to go back to Michigan because I have such bad vertigo. Like my ears are involved with this, everything, my eyes, my ears. Here we go, the noise again, I'm sorry. And um, my first grandchild is going to be born in about a month up in Michigan, and I really, really want to go back there. Um, I can't fly with this condition. We're, we're going to have to drive. Um, the, the problem is, like, I have no more money for insurance, and I've applied for, for Medicaid and things like that, but that's not going to allow me to see doctors that can deal with my situation. I've been told by multiple physicians that I'm a Mayo or a Cleveland case, uh, and it was actually Vanderbilt that they wanted to send me to um, when I saw them last week to have this autonomic dysfunction thing looked at, which will kill me if I don't fix it. So um, I'm hoping that some of the people that have watched the, the research that I've done over the past few years about problems in our environment and the way that it affects the human body, and especially children and unborn children and the health of our children today, who will be the next generation that have to deal with all of the mistakes and problems and situations that we have created or allowed um, companies to create uh, and, and basically polluting our environment to an extent where you can, almost can't drink the tap water anywhere in the U United States anymore uh, without getting, you know, exposed to a, a bunch of different chemicals. Uh, people need to know about this. and. Um, and, and I've done some work over the past few years, and I'm gonna—I'll leave some links underneath the um, video if you're interested in seeing. I never got paid to do any of that research. I did it on my own, and I did it because I have children. I have four daughters, and are now starting to have children of their own, and um, and I want to be able to see that child and and be in its life and help guide the parents with what I know and keep doing the kind of research that I was doing before I got sick. I'm in a neck brace now. Uh, I spilled coffee all over my normal one this morning, but this is the one I usually wear. And I'm in a wheelchair now. I can't walk or go anywhere without this electrical problem causing my body to malfunction. And um, and I feel very vulnerable in public because when you pass out in public, like, you know, people think that you're, like, messed up on something. And that's not it at all. Like, uh, neurological disease is really scary. And it's, it's even scarier when you don't know why it's happening or you don't have any money to investigate it anymore or get the kind of treatment that you need. And so I'm making appeal, an appeal for um, people to uh, possibly donate money so I can continue the insurance that I had previously that helped me do so much of this investigation. Because we started out being, you know, um, just completely in the dark. And, and really, the, the first couple neurologists that saw me, one of them told me to see a shrink. Like, he didn't, they didn't even want to look into it because at the time I had Medicaid. Like, that's how little they care about people on Medicaid. And once I got, like, Cadillac, you know, style insurance, all of a sudden, like, the doctors were actually willing to try to look into this and help me. And it's just that they're stumped. Um, I've been told 98% of the people uh, from the cardiologist that I saw, because I have just a horrendous chest pain with this all the time, too that 
98% of the people that have this kind of conglomeration of symptoms never find out why this happened to them. Uh, but I'm going to need long-term care. Right now, I can't be left alone. I have to have a babysitter 24 hours a day. I can't go near water. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I am always at risk of these, these things happening where I just pass out and it's usually after I turn my head. There's something mechanical in here that was supposed to be looked at further uh, by a special MRI, but now without insurance I can't do that either. So I'm going to ask for, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks to see if there's anybody that can help because I really don't know what to do anymore. It's, um, I, I need to be there for my kids and I need to be there for the people who have, like, helped me live, live through the past year without completely losing my mind over this. And I still have a lot of work that I needed to do with some of the environmental things that I was talking about. Um, and I'll put links below if you want to see what those things are. But I hope that there are some people out there that can uh, can help out. I've got a, a wheelchair and um, occupational therapy and physical therapy that also has to be put on hold now without insurance. And I need this special wheelchair to get around because I can't have one that has like bumps that I will feel any bumps or anything like that because that will set off my my stuff too. Um, the people who already knew about this condition, my, my followers on social media and on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all that, um, you, you guys have had an idea of what's going on with me, but you really have no idea how bad it is. Like just, it's almost, it's so nightmarish what happens to me during these attacks um, that it's, uh, I, I don't even really want to share the details of it because it's so scary and, and uh, I had one of the worst events that I've ever had like three days ago. Um, I, I live kind of in a fun house now with, you know, pains and hallucinations and weird sensations of my throat closing and then my eye will go out and they said until the eye goes out permanently they can't do anything about it really you know surgically or anything and so I'm kind of stuck the way I am right now and it's a really horrible way to be so um, that's my little promotional video this is about all I can pull together in my current state I've been wanting to to do this and thinking about doing this for quite some time and so there it is if you guys can help out, anyone can help out, I'd really appreciate it. And um, share love, care, and concern for your fellow man. That was my tagline, always, anytime I did a radio interview or a radio show. We've got big problems, big, 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 big problems in our environment everywhere. If you're old enough to remember Love Canal, it's not that extreme. There isn't green stuff bubbling out of the ground yet, but it's pretty bad. A lot of it is invisible, unknown, not talked about, covered up by the EPA, the CDC, NIH, all people that I used to work for when I worked in medicine. Um, a lot of them are lying to you about the severity of our problems. And all you have to do is look around and see how many people are sick around you nowadays, especially children. It breaks my heart. And it also keeps me going. Because if they can get through that, I can get through this.